Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Carnival Row Season 2, Episode 4. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, let's pick up with Agreus and Imogen's situation. Sadly, Agreus is having a nightmare, and just, that was pretty brutal. Like, uh, Imogen, it's like her death in particular, like everyone else got shot too but hers in particular was like her face exploded and obviously you know and i think that's kind of an interesting juxtaposition considering imogen had her nightmares about her brother so and neither one of them's really told each other well he doesn't tell her about his nightmare and she didn't tell him about hers but uh obviously they're getting accustomed not learning the ways of their current situation with the uh with new dawn for example, Agreus found out that a woman, like, she was living there with her husband and her children, and they were all kicked out to make room for them, and it's like, oh, because, uh, like, Agreus is like, I had no idea that was, but it's like, yeah, why is it that we had this house and this home, and you got to just take it from us? What makes you so special? And so, they're also put in a situation where they're kind of forced to work, and it's like, right, you don't work, you don't eat. And Agreus is trying to work doubly for Imogen because it's like, yeah, one, a lady of her status shouldn't have to work. And it's like, okay, cool, because that she doesn't get to eat, but Agreus gave her his meal instead because he was trying to do enough work for both of them. He was trying to take that on himself, obviously, which, um, as he kind of calls himself, um, what's was, what was his name? What was it, uh, was it like Castor or something like that? The dude that's kind of like their... Uh, He's like, yeah, I'm the guy that kind of shows you the ropes. Him and Agreus had a, a, a back and forth about, and I think this once again goes back to that conversation previously about, uh, oh, you turn against your class where it's like, you sacrifice so much to get to where you are, but you're trying to be, because it's like, you, he's like, oh, you, having been in the situation you have been in the world that you've grown up in, where it's been humans versus Fae, why would you in turn be in a situation where you would indentured slavery? But he's like, oh, you want to use the term indentured servitude. And he was even saying like, right, you use it in such a, a manner. Like you, 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 it's, it is that interesting catch 22 of a grace because it is like, maybe the argument is like, Hey, you're doing what was done to you. And I'm obviously like, I think that's a parallel that you can make in kind of real life. I mean, and obviously there is the direct parallel of like, yeah, there were black people like during slave times or, you know, you will, you want to put, they want to put a fancy spin on it. Like in dirt server too. It was still slavery. It's just, they wanted to kind of put a more lighter spin to it. But it's like, Hey, in that case, there were like black people that were like above slaves in some regard. They were, they were seen as like, Oh, you're the good one. And you're going to kind of watch over everyone else type of situation. A grace is almost in that particular situation himself where it's like, it's like you, you, you're kind of doing what was done unto you because you're like, right, this is the way the world works. So I, I rose above that situation. I'm in position I am now and I'll kind of do unto others what was done to me because he doesn't see it as wrong necessarily because he sees it as this is the way the world works. It's kind of like it's indentured servitude, but it's like, no, it's the same thing. It's the slavery. But in, in his mind, it's like, it's not that bad because I'm not forcing them it's like but it's through contracts and stuff it's like it's this slippery slope i think because it's like i thought they willfully worked for agreus i didn't know like he kind of had ownership over the people like i knew like there was the conversation of contracts but i thought that was just like a working relationship it's like no it's an indentured servitude contract you know and it's like right com coming from the background you've come from been most likely in that situation we know he's been in that situation and he rose above that and it feels so weird saying that using the term rose above that but it's like he ended up finding himself in a more financial better situation where he never has to be back in that situation he was before now he now it's like right you're trying so hard to You are trying so hard to be human. You are trying so hard to fit in with like the human society that you've adopted humanity's cruelty and you've kind of become a part of this terrible class system and this slavery system. You've become a part of that terrible machine. But we are all about us at New Dawn are all about breaking that. You are kind of you are someone who adopted this. You as as a puck should have never adopted a system 
of man of slavery and indulgence and servitude and being above someone like that where it's like right we're all kind of equal fate and human that's how it should be but rather than kind of fighting for that you give in so much to like sacrifice what you are to be human you know and also kind of going in about Imogen and how, like, right, she is from a, a class family. And then the fact of the matter is having to never do a day's work. And Imogen decides after, like, you know, Agrae is getting chastised so much like that. She's like, right, I'll work. So she does. I mean, it's still this awkward thing of, like, right, she's from the Berg and she's helping build weapon from for people from the pack. Yes, you're not the pack. You're New Dawn. But it's still kind of all the same. So... And ultimately, uh, Imogen and Leonora ended up having a conversation because her and Imogen are in a similar boat. They both married someone that's not, you know, Imogen, not married, but she's with uh, her significant other is a fae. And in Le Leonora's case, her significant other is a human. And it's like, right, in the, at least in the pact. Uh, if a human is caught with a fae, like if they're mingling like that, the human will suffer some ramifications, but not to the extent that a fae would. A fae would is like, yeah, I'd, I'd be killed and like my, my horns would be mounted on the wall. It's like, it, does that happen in a Bergen's like, well, we don't know. Like, she's completely unaware there is another fae human uh, thing going on that being Philo and Vignette, but even that's kind of... Even more complicated because it's like, well, Philo is torn between both worlds because he lived as a human, but he's actually half fae. Uh, so there's that element to it. But So they're completely unaware of each other's circumstances. But also we d don't know what, cause it's, it, because even Imogen talked about it. It's like, it's so, that racism is so enrooted, rooted in her. And, and that to me is kind of the, the, the terrible thing about racism. And like, it isn't just like a natural thing. It is like, it is something that is learned. Like, that's how racism has continued. It's, it's just, a, oh, you grow up in an environment that teaches you, like, oh, this is how things are. And she grew up in a world, like, her worldview has only changed recently because of Agreus. It's like, if it wasn't for him, she'd still have those same beliefs that she did. The beliefs that it's not just, like, the Berg has. Like, it's the beliefs that everyone has, because even the Pact has that. And New Dawn is just spun off from that with their own beliefs of kind of equality. Um... But there was like this kindred moment between um, Leonora and Imogen because Imogen talks about like, yes, yeah, she still finds it hard to like always wrap her head around because she has to come like she feels it in her heart. She loves Agreus, but the problem is her mind of what she knows, like it's still like that struggle between heart and mind about how you're feeling versus like how you've been raised to believe. And kind of coming to terms with that is still something she's struggling with. It's like, and change obviously like that doesn't always come easy to kind of unwire your brain, to rewire your brain into thinking otherwise. Like that when you've grown up most of your life believing a certain thing. And like I said, it's only been such a recent change for her. Um, and Leonora had brought up the point of like, right, it's so like, oh, the like, disgusting human feet. But it's like, yeah, you, you know, it may take some time, but eventually you'll come to love his hooves, you know? That's why it's like, oh, I came to love my SO's feet just because, but I am curious, like, who they are. Cause we haven't met them yet, so I'm curious to find out, um, who they are. Um, I wonder, was it kind of a similar circumstance of like, Agrius and, Agreus and um, Imogen. I wonder if there was like a uh, similar circumstance with Leonora and her significant other. Could it have been a situation of like, well, I mean, Agreus like was in a more like he had the money and like to to push his way into human society. I wonder, but I wondered, was she an indentured servant? And then they fell in love, and that's what really sparked this revolution. Because it seems like Leonora is at the top top of it. So I'm wondering like. I mean, it's only been this one episode, but I am curious. Like, we learn about this significant other, but I'm curious, did he die? And is that what kind of sparked this revolution? Because it does seem like she's the head of it. Um, but uh, Leonora is like, yeah, they had this, they had this, you know, back and forth. And Imogen kind of felt nice being able to openly talk about this stuff with someone else who under also understood, like, dating someone that's different from you. But then uh, Leonora was kind of like, yeah, Grace kind of has to fall in line because if he doesn't, it's going to end bad for him and you. So Imogen was like, right, she kind of saw the darker side of this whole thing, but she's willing to give this place a shot because it's like, right, 
she knows, like, where else would we go? We can't go to the Burr because if we go back, I mean, for one, you'd have to deal with the ramifications of everything with her brother and everything. But also the fact is that they would never be accepted because she even talks to um, Agrius about that later. It's like, where will we go? Where could we go just to be together? So it's like this place, we can make the me mess, uh, most of it because this is a place where we can love each other without repercussions. We can be free in our love for each other and no one would bat an eye, you know? But Agrius saw kind of like he, and I love that parallel of like, she's kind of seeing the better side of this place, whereas he's seeing kind of like the darker elements to it because she's had a more positive outlook. And I think that's by design, whereas Agrius has kind of had like the darker outlook because Agrius came back and it's like, wait, where's uh, Madam Hannah? It's like, who? It's like the woman whose room we took. She was here, her and her family. It's like, that person doesn't exist. And I think because you should stop talking about someone that doesn't exist, I guess because she made such a stink about it, they ended up like banishing her somewhere else or either killing her. I don't know. It's like, it's like, yeah, this place like, oh, if you don't kind of fall in line, you will just be disappeared like that. So... And Agrius eventually tells Imogen about, you know, what happened. It's like, oh, the crew, they didn't get set free. They were gunned down beside me, you know? And it's like, I'm going to find us a way out of here. But it's like, once again, if we go somewhere else, where will we go? And taking advantage of this place because Imogen's like, right, we could use this place as an opportunity to learn more about each other. So he ends, she ends up cleaning off his hoof because to show him that, like, right, I accept and am loving every part of you i'm you know figuring this out we are figuring this out and it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this goes um because even um hey, Im uh, leonora had told imogen like hey uh about that rifle that she's building and like oh you you'll kind of get your own it's like you never know when you might need it and um not with just the Berg stuff, but obviously with the pack itself, because Ezra did let her know, because he showed up. He uh, He's like, oh, in great sacrifice of myself, I came here to tell you about the Berg. And it's like, I guess he plans on grabbing his sister and leaving, or at least getting close enough to them so that he could kill Agrius and take Imogen. Once again, maybe because she's the continuing embarrassment uh, to the family. Uh, he plans on, I mean, he's already killed home dude last episode, so... Um, He's kind of deranged right now, so there's no probably talking him down. I don't think, maybe, I, I highly doubt it. So his presence here, what that kind of looks like, what that ends up being, we'll ultimately have to wait and see what kind of effect that has on things. And I don't know, maybe being here will change his mind. Like I said, I think it is just simply like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get my sister out of here. She, he's probably going to leave agreeous to all of this and then just try and leave. I don't, I don't, I think it's so interesting that, interesting that you were able to manage all this. I guess like he was able to make his way here, probably able to pay off the right people, get this all done because of all the stuff that he sold. So it's like, once again, you've gone so above and beyond because he can't stay back home because the longer Imogen is gone, the more those rumors will spread and you know, it's like, right, I need to bring my sister back. I need to get life back on track, get us back to where we was. But for Imogen, there's no going back. But Ezra is so desperate to get things back to the way they were. Who knows what he'll do in those... Well, we do know what he'll do in that desperation. Like I said, I'm sure he'll kill Agrius, but whether or not he'd kill Imogen too in his psychoticness, who knows? It's a possibility. I mean, Imogen's had nightmares about it, so I'm sure that'll make their reunion interesting, uh, to say the least. So, um, on the other side of things, in the Berg, uh, we uh, we got uh, uh, Dombe and his uh, family, which is so interesting. It's like, man, he's such a dick. They like kind of humanizing him a little bit, but then like you also hear the way his father talks. And you're like, yeah. Once again, I think it plays into that notion of once again racism and hate isn't something that's like natural it is a, i i i want to believe humans we are capable of just being born in neutral state it is a combination of i think nature does play some part but i also believe it is nurture i think it is a combination of two i don't think it's just very one-sided maybe more nurture than nature but i still do believe nature plays a part in the mix so there's that but i do like environmental stuff has a uh, as a big part in what makes you into who you are and so Dumbe, like it probably seems like oh like obviously you get a lot of your your hate and kind of how your whole assholishness it seems like you kind of potentially get it from your father a little bit so but yeah uh darius and um 
Philo showed up. It's like, no, we're not here to have beef with you. The fact of the matter is we need your help looking into this investigation because, hey, the Ravens are coming after you. Uh, the woman you killed, yeah, her fiance is coming to gut you, which he has every right to considering what you did. But it's like, Philo's like, I'm trying to stop the, this powder keg from exploding. So I need to protect you to make sure you don't die. But also we need to work together. Like if we can find the real killer, he's like, yeah, the killer, I, you know, isn't a human. If we can find the real person, then maybe we can stop all this from happening. Sadly, the Ravens already got there in Philo's and Vignette's way. It's like, oh, I followed you because I can't believe you would choose the human side. So Darius ends up leaving with, uh, uh, Dombe and it's like, uh, I guess, I wonder, because when it all went down, like, obviously, they ended up attacking Darius, and Darius turned into a, a Merrick, and I was like, oh, I guess, it's like, oh, you didn't tell us his, uh, Philo's friend was a Merrick, it's like, I don't think even she knew, like, had, did, had he even told her about Darius? Because that all happened at, during the whole Tyrannoch, that Tyrannoch situation seven years ago, but I don't know how much, uh, I mean, because they've been away, and I don't know if that conversation ever really came up. It definitely didn't come up during season one, but I don't know if that's something that happened in between, or like in between episodes, anytime him and Vignette were together, or maybe even in between season one and season two, whether they had those conversations. So she might not even known about, that's why I'm like, I'm feeling like maybe she didn't even know about Darius, or maybe she did and just didn't think, is caught up in the moment and probably didn't realize Darius was there, when um when everything went down so but yeah like uh they were luckily able to protect him and obviously philo got arrested but it's like uh don Bebo's was like i let him go we don't want him staking up the place we know exactly where to find him it's like well you do owe him your life so you're letting him go but also you believe him about like yeah there's something else going on here and even talking to uh, philo's like yeah i kind of got that uh berwick to kind of join our side in this investigation but, uh, yeah, like, even the Ravens are kind of pissed at Vignette because it's like, yo, you're still protecting your boyfriend. Philo made his decision. He chose the humans above us. So we, uh, because, uh, Philo was trying to stop, uh, Kane because it's like, right, doing what you're doing isn't going to bring Ona back. In fact, it's going to make things worse. That's, that's the whole point it is. And, um, sadly, uh, I mean, even Vignette and, uh, Philo are sitting or drinking at the bar together and it's like, yo, it sucks that things have kind of gotten to this point that they are so divided. It's like, it's like, are you okay? It's like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm like, are you okay? And it's like, yeah, the he's like, I need you to get out of here because it's only going to be a matter of time before the cops like roll through because they they saw your face, they know what you look like, they will come after you. And she's like, you're the one that needs to get out, Philo. Like the Ravens, every one of them has said you've chosen your side, and so they want you dead. And so it's like both are kind of screwed on every other front. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I, quite the pair we make. You know, it's like, yeah, but it's like we were just kind of deluding ourselves. Like for the time, like it was kind of a nice dream, but like reality had to come and wake us up. This is how things really are. And, you know, you've chosen your side and I've chosen mine. But like for Philo, it's like I'm not I'm I'm trying to save all lives like because he's like, I know the way to what this is going to cause for the um the row, like the ramifications. So I need to um, do right by, e I'm trying to do right by everyone because I'm trying to make sure no one dies, like human or fey. I don't want this to bleed into some something because once again, he is someone that's been discounted by both worlds, except accepted by neither. He was part of the human world, but no, obviously they no longer uh count him amongst their ranks, but it's also like he's torn between both worlds, neither one fully accepting him, but because of that unique situation he's in, I think that's why he has a loyalty to both, but it's kind of like what Darius said, and kind of into Vignette's point of like, right, you accept in your head that you are part Fae, but you have not fully accepted it in your heart type of situation, which uh, once again is kind of an, a parallel with the Imogen situation, you know, so, and I mean, more kind of a inverse, you know, head versus heart situation, but you, you get the, the, the point I was trying to make. Either way, uh, the cops roll through and they're like busting heads in a row and Philo is doing everything he can to kind of bust up a lot of that. And especially because they're going after the Black Ravens, which they start like killing them, but Vignette sacrifice herself. It's like, I'm the one you want. You you want me? I'm the one that kind of went after Dombe. And it's like, he ends up arresting her and it's like, oh, she doesn't deserve a clean death. And they end up taking her away. So, 
Philo's probably going to try and get her. But, I mean, what can he say and what can he do in that regard? Who knows um, how that's all going to turn out. Uh, Tourmaline went to visit uh, the Mima. It's like, oh, she's like, I know you've been dabbling in that dark power. She's like, no, no, I was helping one friend. That's over. I'm going to get rid of all of this. It's like, yeah, but it's it, it's a curse. Um, I want you going down this path once again. It's evil magic. And it's like, that's also the thing too, but it's evil that could be used for good. So does that make it innately evil? Maybe, I don't know. But um, Tourmaline saw the situation of like that creature confronting her. She's like, oh, I saw my death. Now we didn't actually see her dad. We saw her screaming, but the same thing happened to uh, Samani last uh, season too. She saw her own death. You know, it's like, right, it is a natural thing because you're not supposed to be able to see. It's not right for any being to be able to have that much. That sight is too powerful. It's not meant for anyone's viewing. That's only like you're not supposed to have that much knowledge. So Mina, the Mima is giving her like, hey, this can help purge the darkness if you aren't fully embraced darkness. But Tormelin's like, nope, nope, not darkness. Me, nope, I'm not darkness at all. So hopefully it can purge what's inside of it that Sumani like left to her like purge it completely but it's like hey it will be excruciating so but also she did say it's something that hasn't been done in 600 years so who even knows if it will even work too or if it might already be too late for Tourmaline because she's had three visions already so it might already you might be too steeped in the quote unquote darkness for it to be purged from you it might be too inseparable or it might even be something that Samani made it so it could never be separated from you, not completely. So we have to wait and see on that front where things go. But she ends up running into um, Darius, who busted into the place, and it's like, well, didn't know he was a Merrick. And obviously kind of finds out about his circumstances. It's like, wait, but it's not a full moon. It's like, yeah, but the Pat kind of made that a thing. It's like, yeah, it happened um, during the f that fight at Tinnernock, like, all those years ago. And it wasn't just a pat trying to weaponize that stuff. So was the Berg. He's like, yeah, they arrested me. They poked. They prodded me. They did what they could using pain as a means of trying to force my transformation. Because that way they could have a uh, Merrick weapon of their own. And, like, and even Tormenting being like, oh, like they would do that to one of their own soldiers. Why would they do it? He's like, because I'm not one of their soldiers. To them, I'm just another critch. And then he apologized because he's like, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Like snapping at you like that. But also, I sh in my situation, I shouldn't be using the word critch because it's like, yes, because it's a derogatory term. Then he could have just been, you know, to them, I'm just another phase, what he should have said. But he's like, right, I'm sorry. And it's just like, because he, yes, he has some control over it, but I think sometimes it's like, if he gets too wrapped up in it, he can't control. I mean, he controlled himself enough to get back to the place he was staying at. He also didn't kill, um, I mean, to be fair, the Raven got away beforehand, but he could have killed her. But I think maybe that department wasn't trying to spill blood, so. But, uh, Tourmaline, uh, trying to be there for Darius because he's like, no, 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 I, I should I should stay here. And she's like, it's okay. Because he's like, as long as you don't poke me with any sharp objects, I, I, won't, I shouldn't transform or anything. And she's like, I promise not to poke you any sharp objects. So like, you know, come and like get cleaned up and everything. Because I think it is that situation of, especially their situations is like, they're both, uh, blatantly speaking, both cursed. And they're, they both have a darkness. They're dealing with him dealing with the Merrick, her dealing with uh, this sight and power that she has. So, I mean, there might be something in that vein where she might be able to cure him of being a Merrick. I mean, we don't, we don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's, once again, it does feel like they are setting that up. I mean, whether they become a couple or not, that that's, we'll have to wait and see. But I wonder, is that what they're setting up? Or is it just going to be a situation of they can kind of understand each other in a very unique situation, both being in a very different yet similar curse situation so a lot of really interesting things uh i'm curious to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode uh but really that's all i want to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good bye